I'm not, I got a little bit lost with the whole where morality came to the picture, mm. but except that I think I quite followed. Um, <laughs> I really have a little bit of an... Uh, of, um, uh, maybe it's a, my own personal problem, but I hear a lot of judgment in everything which is being said here. I hear a lot of, we are sitting here doing something really incredibly important and great and high and necessary and everybody else outside should come and see how incredibly important it is. They don't know yet that they will know how incredibly important it is once they've been exposed to this incredible thing. Now, obviously, from a personal point of view, I agree with you. I am a musician. I think it is great. But, sorry, Bach and Mendelssohn and Mozart, who is what I do every day, have been dead for 200 years now. There are people outside in the street who have other content that is not less valid than what we do in this hall. So what, I would say. So what? So now, that a person sorry, no, let, let, sorry okay, I'll get sorry, there in a yeah. few seconds. I am the first one to think, since this is my life, that an orchestra as incredible as the orchestra that plays in this hall in a building which has so much tradition and history is incredibly important, but it's a part of what we have to do. We cannot lose contact with what's happening now and with what, why am I, not me, me, but me, a person of my age, what has Mozart got to do with me? Mm -hmm. What has Shakespeare got to do with me? It's our role as interpreters to find a bridge between these works and these people, but it's also a role to create things that happen nowadays, because if we go on telling people in the street for the next 200 billion years that they're too stupid to understand our great culture, they won't find it more interesting. Now, the, the point is, we have, we have to have, first of all, not say it, but feel deep respect for other cultures, other kinds of uh, interests of people that are not interested in art, that are not interested in what we consider important art, but have true respect for what interests them if we want them to have respect for what interests us. Because I think, essentially, art and what we try to do here, and I think that's what he said, because what I've been doing my whole life is try to make music for people who have never seen, heard music before. It's all about an exchange, it's about communication. I try to say something to my audience, I want to hear something, I'm trying to have an exchange with my audience. If somebody does it through music or through theater or through playing football or through reciting Chinese poetry, I don't care. We have to challenge, we have to get into a discussion, we have to get into, a, into a, some sort of a platform where we reach to one another. Now, one last thing. Um, what you said, I completely agree with it, and it's, it's, that's what I've been trying to do a lot as well. And, and Partially failed, partially not, I don't know. But it's very easy to convince anybody in the street who has never been to a concert before to go to a concert once. If you're a little bit charismatic and you have three good excuses, you'll find a way after 15 minutes to make them try it out. A completely different story starts where it's about making them come a second time. You will not convince anybody if they have been to an experience which did not move them, they will not come even if you tell them 300 times that it was really important. We are always approaching this by explaining, oh, it's about education, and it's about teaching, and it's about explaining. We don't have to understand music. Music is not there to be understood. Art is not there to be understood. I don't have to look at a painting and understand anything to know it's beautiful or for it to move me. It either does or it doesn't. If music doesn't move you, you won't come back to a concert, and you shouldn't. I don't go to many concerts because they just don't move me. Now, why do I have to go to a kid who is 10 and say, I'm going to teach you for the next 2,000 years until you will know enough to understand why move music is good? No. We should just make sure. The problem starts with us musicians or us artists. We have to offer something that is, has substance that will move our audience. Then they will come. We don't have to educate them in that way. We'll educate them through showing them that real experience is possible. That's my opinion on, okay. the, on that subject. Thank Sorry. you, Al. And, and, uh, um, let, yeah, yeah, let, let me turn this and I'll give you the floor, uh, Yori, uh, to, to the uh, final general question and then we turn to the audience. Um, of course, that if you consider uh, uh, this a situation in which 
uh, arts and culture are much less important than probably it was 100 years ago. And before we go to the world of politics or technology or commercial life or whatever, what happened in the world of culture, what happened in the world of arts, that much less people are interested to participate uh, uh, in all of this. Um, Jordi, what are your... No, um, I, I agree totally with what you say. But uh, I think one of the problems we have, uh, uh, as you have said before, we have uh, the thing to specialize. We have do a program in, in the Festival of Salzburg with the program this, with a great success, with people from Serbia, Bosnia, uh, Turkey, Armenia, uh, our uh, Cigoyners. And I think we have to open yeah. the music to every culture. And it's not only the music which composed with great names, which is important, because many of the cultures, they have music like the Sephardi people, like the Armenian, like the uh, Serbian, like that. This is really authentic music from the life of the persons, because this music has helped, helped still today people to survive. And I think this is the important. When you say this, to touch it, but when you listen to a Bosnian singer singing old melody, you feel these people is fighting for his life, <clears throat> for, for, for having a chance to be alive, you know? And I think we have to bring the music to this level of authenticity. One of the things that makes the classical music dying, it's because we are automats. Yeah. We are automats, we are not anymore trained to, to use the music as a something which is essential for life. And I think this, uh, the chance is to open for really music played by, by musicians. They fight for the life and for, for the music. But you see, this is in a way a, a re exactly a result of that. You tr if you train people to specialize, they become at the end... No, the no, the, the people, are, are, the people from, from the Balkans are not the space. Well, exactly. That's why I actually agree with you. But I think what happened in the classical world yeah. is that we, we completely we stopped encouraging people to be personal mm -hmm. and to be sincere. We encourage them to fit to certain rules if they want to fit in certain boxes. And I completely agree with you. If, if my music does not represent my story and I don't say my story when I play, the audience will feel it and they will not be moved by it just by me executing notes correctly. It doesn't interest anybody. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. And we must make sure, exactly as you said, that we don't maybe subconsciously have this little bit of, of, of arrogance that we think our music is better than other music. Oh, because there is no better music than other music. Yeah. Every culture of every, or every art of every, or every ritual of every culture is as legitimate and as important. And I think I completely agree with what you said. Yes, but I say still we, we need musicians, they can play Mozart, they can play For Monteverdi. Sure. <laughs> also. <laughs> because this also uh, music from our time course. and we need this also. Yeah. Yeah, I will, I will try to. I, I must agree too. You know, what can I do? Because because you are right. But maybe it's interesting to look at two different layers. The first one is that, um, of course, you need kind of know what you are doing. So the the reason how, how to teach children is with good teachers, and this counts for all walks of life. It counts for music or for culture, whatever. If you know why this kind of picture is moving you, you can also talk to somebody else about it, if you really know it. So the first thing is, well, all forms of music are forms of the human animal singing to itself. Why should one be more better than the other? Of course, you can say one is better done than the other. And, and I would always put emphasis on that one. You can also say one is better conveyed than the other. But what lies deeper is, it's not only about you feel your story when you sing the song, man, yeah? That's, that only brings you, that's quite a limited perspective because empathy enables us to feel and to understand that we could be the other in that situation. Like, how could you be moved by a picture if you never sat on a horse, by example, and there's somebody sitting on a horse, you know? Or how could you be moved by a massacre if you've never been through it and also know nobody who has, you know? You, you know all this because you can feel for the other and this is an access to all things produced culturally and to a capacity of understanding them. You do not have to like them, like there's ghastly music out there, please, you know? But, but you, you could understand that and this broader understanding of 
something what the human animal does and is capable of and what happens to him, I think for me is the key to something like education or to, to find a 2,000-year-old book incredibly interesting and fresh or, or to, you know, understand the music which is not your own culture and therefore everything is valuable but, you know, if it's nicely conducted. Yeah. But the, the, the question is, why is this big statement uh, much less evident uh, for so many uh, people. And what is the responsibility? Why is it that the world of arts and culture, which has been subsidized for many years, uh, why is it that we, you know, world of culture, world of arts or whatever, have not been able to convince a ruling class, political parties, and especially, you know, an audience that what we are doing is, quote, unquote, very, very important. What, where, where is it that, what is it that we did wrong? What uh, uh, I think, uh, I, I, I was thinking about what you said. Um, this is uh, a temple of music. Is it called like that, a temple of music? Can I say it's that? a, a temple, temple without, we hope, a threshold. Tremples of no, temple no, 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 no. <laughs> for music. Yeah, it's a temple yeah. of music. But there is not all music in this temple. And that's, the f the, I think, one of the mistakes we make. Because if my son is studying composition at the conservatory in Amsterdam, he's very interested in jazz, and he's also very interested in rap. And we, as an audience, I think, well, I know now because he is interested in that, but the very nice thing about rap is that I live in a village like Rome or a small village like Bolnes, whatever. I write about Bolnes, that I come from that, and I stay there, and I want to tell about my village how beautiful it is. So my move is not coming into the center my move is there, I want to show you, I, I want to show you how beautiful identity I, uh, I, I, I've got, I've, I, uh, 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 an important identity uh, I've got. That's the sort of music. But we, I think, uh, me too, we have um, um, moved that uh, out instead of looking, ignore it, instead of looking how beautiful it is. Because in Germany, let's say uh, we have, in my theater, we have a big, big, big um, uh, music program. But the Germans, to give an example, count on 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. The, 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 the uh, let's say, the rap people count like that, 1, 2, Three, fear, which is completely different, and that we've lost that feeling. 